Okay, so remember the p-value is a probability, but it's attached to a data set, and it's presuming that all hypotheses are true of obtaining a test statistic as favorable or more favorable than the data obtained for the, the values obtained by the data. So some of the information is just based on this online stat course at Penn State. And so if you follow this link right here, um, right down here, this book link right there, it just kind of goes through inference for one sample, whether that's one sample for proportion or one sample for um, quantitative data. And remember that the general form of a confidence interval is our sample statistic plus or minus our multiplier times standard error. And then if we're doing hypothesis testing, our uh, test statistic becomes our sample statistic minus our assumed parameter from our null hypothesis divided by our standard error. Basically just using some algebra to get from one to another. So in general, we state the test, write the hypotheses, check the assumptions, calculate the results, and test statistic, determine the p-value, and then make a decision. Small p-values, we have evidence against <coughs> null hypothesis. Larger p-values, we have less evidence, and we cannot doubt the result of that. So let's take a look at a one-sample proportion test. One of the sometimes you have to do is you have to tally individual values. And so you can go to stat table of values in case you need to do that. Um, if you could go to the online.stat.psu.edu stat 200 book export HTML 143. You would go down about 10% of the way to where they start um, looking at things and download. So right click and save link as or save target as or um, something like that so you can open up the data. Click it and save the target as Calvin. Can you show the link again? Yeah, it's it's just on the um, so go to your calendar page and download Lab Eight. Oh, yeah, I see that. Right. Okay. This one doesn't work. Um, because you're in a Word document, but the online stat one should work. Anyway, it's not that big of a part. It's just that if you wanted to tally how many dogs, people who own dogs, you can go to stat um, tables and tally the individual values. And in this case, what we get is 252 did not have a dog and 272 did have a dog. So let's do our hypothesis test. So step one, we're going to do a, a one proportion z-test. 
And our null hypothesis will be that 50% of the people who own dogs, in our alternative hypothesis, at 50% people do not own dogs at 50%, sometimes more or not. So half the people own dogs. And half the people, not half the people, own dogs. So let's check the assumptions. Yeah, Jeff. Um, I can't download the data. So. Okay, so you're on the web page, right? Mm -hmm. And you right click it. Right click it. And does it say something like save target as? Are you in Chrome or in Edge? Save link as. Yeah. yeah, save yeah. link as. Which one is it? The 2016. Yeah. So we should check the assumptions. Is it random data to taking 274 people from this particular class? population is, isn't it? <clears throat> is this a random sample for the entire U.S. population? No. If we're just kind of restricting it to people who take online classes at Penn State, even then, it's kind of like one particular year, 2016, maybe there was an increase in hunting in Pennsylvania that year, although I can't imagine it getting any higher than what it is now in Pennsylvania. But, um, so I don't think it's very random. What about normality? Is this categorical data or quantitative data? Categorical, so our test for hypothesis is NP or N bigger than 30? NP, so let's try and check that. NP turned out to be 260. 72 successes. I think that's bigger than 10. And the number of failures was 252, which is also bigger than 10. So normality does hold. So we have to kind of proceed with caution here that we don't have a random data set. Isn't it, wasn't it one half of each of those? What was it? Isn't it one half of each of those? Well, like, what we would do is, um, oh, you're right. I was getting too cute. Not that I could get any cuter than what I am. Uh, what we should have is 524 times 0 0.5 and 524 times 0 0.5. And both of those are bigger than 10. You're right. Because what we're doing, yeah, this is the distinction between confidence intervals and test of hypothesis. In confidence intervals, we use the sample proportion. In test of hypothesis, we use the assumed proportion, the null hypothesis proportion. Um, what? Yes, Jeff? Well, can, you, can you give the distinction between those two? Confidence intervals are giving an estimate. So we don't care. We don't really know what our true proportion is. We're just estimating the true proportion between this interval. That's the hypothesis that we're setting up. We want to check to see what's the evidence for this null hypothesis being true. Do you want to give me an alpha? What level we should check this at? Uh, so 0 0.05? OK. So what that means is we will reject the null hypothesis 
if the p-value is less than 0 0.05. That's kind of our standard. Anything less than 5%, we're saying it's too implausible to happen by chance. Our original assumption must have been wrong. So let's go ahead and take a look at the results. The results were that we had 272 out of 524 own a dog. If we were going to calculate the test statistic then, we do Z of 272 over 524, that's my P hat, minus 0.5 divided by 0 0.5, 0 0.5 over 524. This is my PQ over N. So that would be my standard error okay. that I would use that for that. So your standard error, because it's categorical, you know you have N, NP is your... Yeah, P times, P times Q divided by N, take the square root. This is, we're taking samples of this size, not a, not a binomial distribution. How, so, so we're taking like samples of 524 and taking their average proportion. So let's go ahead and we could calculate that on our calculator. But let's go ahead and do our statistics. One proportion. Um, because I don't have this, I have to do the summarized data. I had 272 dog owners out of 524. I'm going to perform that the hypothesized proportion was 50%. Are we OK at this point? How'd you get to that again? Uh, stat, basic statistics, one proportion. Okay. And for my options, um, I'm going to change this to not equal to, and I'm going to do a normal approximation. Because Jeff told me 95%, so I'm going to do 95%. If you would have told me 90, I would put 90 in here. Are we want exact or normal? We're going to do normal approximation because we have that test statistic there. And if we calculate that out, our z value turns out to be 0.87. So if I drew and you should draw the picture of negative 0.87. Let's go ahead and figure out the probability that we would get something as extreme or more extreme than 0.87 and negative 0.87. So we want to find out what this area is here. And so that's the p-value. Again, it's the probability of seeing something as extreme or more extreme with our null hypothesis. So this again kind of reminder what you do. You go to graph, probability distribution plot, and we want to view the probability. It's also explained on that Word document as well, but we'll go through it again. And in this case, I want to make sure I'm at a normal distribution. Sometimes I want a T distribution, but in this case I want a normal distribution. And I wanted the shaded area, I want the area in both tails. So since I'm given an x value, that is the value down here, 0.87 and negative 0.87, I want to put in 0.87 here to calculate the probability. And so I put my x value in there, and I find out that my p value becomes 0.1922 plus 0.1922, which is about 0.384. So now the question is, is that too implausible to happen by chance? Is 38% too implausible to say, OK, this difference by chance is way too big. The likelihood of this happening is so small, there's no way that this could happen by I mean, there's just too unlikely. It's too bizarre. 
38%. Not really. I mean, that's <coughs> that's better than any baseball hitter being a hit. I mean, so I mean, it's, so in this case, uh, since 0.384 is greater than 0.05. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. And then state a conclusion, there is not, evi not enough evidence probably also say because we don't have a random set, we can't say that. So we fail to reject because the p-value is not less than 0 0.05, yeah. Um, at the very beginning of your statement, was the consistence 0.384? Is greater than 0 0.05? Okay. Yeah, and by the way, we got this p-value already right here, 0.382. So 38% is pretty not, not too bad. So is this saying given 524 if we had whatever 272 is away from the middle, if it's that far off the middle or more, 38% of the time it could happen. So assuming, can't say and we're, we're going to try that with simulation, assuming that the, tr the troop, assuming that it was 50-50. So assuming that it's random as in 50-50, the likelihood it could of, happen. Yeah, it could happen. It's plausible that we could happen. Because remember, your data could have been different. And now, if we got like 0.1%, we'd say right. we reject the norm. Yeah, because it's just too unlikely. My uncle Elmer's a liar. Can you show you ran that test on confidence interval? This confidence interval here? Yeah. because You I get mean, it for free. You what? get it if you do a hypothesis test. It gives you this. And by the way, it is 0.5 in this confidence interval. It is. And that gives us another reason why we would not reject the null hypothesis. Because I have a different, I have a slightly different p-value. So I I thought I followed what you did, but I, I guess I didn't. Cause... OK. Um, did, did other people get 47.6% too? For the low. For the low? Yeah. Did you do a one-sided or you did two-sided? Uh, I did one-sided. It should be two-sided. Oh, So did you just have like 0.44 here or something? Yeah, I have. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that's kind of the steps that we would go through. But remember, when you do a test of hypothesis, you don't stop. We would go through and do some more explorations in the statistical world because we're already. My name's not showing my anything. Mm -hmm. Like. This display window here that showing It's not showing anything else. Yeah. 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 
Okay, now let's go ahead and play a little simulation part. The purpose of today is to show the p-value both by simulation and by the math for that, or using mini tab, or using these test statistics. Because remember, the p-value is a probability, but you assume the null hypothesis is true, and given those assumptions, you get this test statistic, how likely is that based on your data? Is it too unlikely, or is it you know, plausible given the probability? So if you could go to the Rossman Chats applets, you can either follow that link on the lab eight page, or you can just type in Rossman Chance applet and do it for uh, single proportions. So so it should be simulations for one proportions at this point here. So we're going to do the simulation part. You're ready to go. Okay. How many of you are left-handed? Two? All right. How many left-handed are there in the world? What percentage of are left-handed? I always heard six, but we'll change it. Six percent of people are left-handed? Yeah, that's what I've heard. That's what they always say in baseball. You know, there are six percent of the men are left-handed, but 30 percent of the pitchers are left-handed. I don't know, something like that. So let's suppose I survey 100 people and 88 say that they're right-handed. This is made up data, of course, but um, plus I think there could be ambidextrous in here. So, so what I'm saying is my claim is that I have 80%. What's my sample proportion? What did I get from the data? Yeah, 0.88. My sample proportion is the number of successes over the trial. It's not that they were saying that right-handed people is success. Remember, success in statistics is not always a positive thing. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and describe the process. Let's put in 0.8 here. And we have. 100 tosses, because we're going to simulate this if we had 100 people. By the way, you could sometimes people write pi, because it's a Greek letter, and pi kind of goes with p. And plus, you don't get it confused with the p value. Um, all those things are good things to do. So let's do this survey. So. I'm going to have 80% of the success and 100 people I'm taking. And so if I draw a sample, the first time I got 80 out of 100, exactly right. The next time I do it, I get 81 out of 100. The next time I get 74 out of 100, 83 out of 100, 82 out of 100, 85 out of 100. And I just do this over and over and over again. And so eventually I get something that looks like it's normally distributed. So if I claim that no, this is way too, that the number of right-handed is too low, that the number of right-handed is actually bigger, so my null hypothesis might be that pi is 0.8, and my alternative hypothesis is no, this is going to be greater than 0.8. Let's figure out the percentage for those that would be bigger than 0.18. So let's see it's extreme. The number of successes is 88 or greater. So I'm assuming that the null hypothesis that I had it is 88. Oops. And I'm going to count that. I get 2.6 percent. What is what do the rest of you get? 2.39. 2.39. 2.0. Three point five seven. Do you do two sided or one sided? Mm -hmm. One sided. What is it? Wait. Is that eighty eight now? Yeah, greater than equal to eighty eight. Okay. What'd you guys get in the back? Three point three three percent. 
3.33%. Okay. 2.57. 2.57. 2.02. 2.02. Kind of depends on how many samples you draw. You can keep drawing samples like, you know, instead of 1,007, you could do 2,007. And you can kind of see it hovers around like 2.56%. So is this too implausible to have it by chance? Kind of depends what your initial statement is, but I think it is. I think 2.5% is too unlikely to have it by chance. I would say my initial thing that the proportion is 80%, I think it's higher than that based on this data. And, and not lower because? Well, you could, if you did have different, then you, you'd have to add to both sides. You'd have to double your, your red values proportions, yeah. So do two sides? So 88 here is our observed? Yep, this is what we did in our statistic. We served okay. 800 people and 88 said that right, okay. they were right-handed. Yeah. So if you do, what's the meaning if you do two-sided? That's saying. Oh, it's just as extreme. So instead of, instead of it's greater than 80%, I'm saying it's not 80%. It's some other number than 80%. Okay, and for that you get like 0.04. Or 0.05 probably, or 0.6. What's that? Yeah. So what we're saying here by rejecting the null hypothesis that that is unlike that is unlikely that 88 of 100 people would be right. No, we're saying that overall overall population, the number of percentage of people who are right-handed is greater than 80 percent. So we're taking okay. something so about the sample and making some conclusion about the population. Okay, let's go ahead and show this how we would do this on mini tab. Well, actually, before we do that, what happens if I would have said, okay, it's Instead of 80%, I'm going to say it's 85%. So let's clear, reset this, and draw a thousand samples again and again. And uh, what's your probability now? What's your p-value now? About 25%. That's what you got too. And this is what the simulation is. So there's a couple things to note about: is that the p-value is corresponds to a particular data set. You know, they call on, you may have gotten 84 in your data set of 100. The second one is you have to assume something about the null hypothesis. Here we're assuming, there we assumed 80%, here we're assuming 85%, and the p value changes depending on what your assumption is. And it's a taste statistic as favorable or more favorable for the alternative based on this particular data. So it's based on the null hypothesis and it's based on your particular sample data that you collected. So the p-value just isn't one thing. It's, it, it depends on several different parts of this. So if I did, oh, I did that. If we did 85%, we'd fail to reject the null hypothesis. What I was saying, if we use Minitab, we could go ahead and use Minitab, uh, stat, basic statistics, one proportion. We have the summarized data, 88 out of 100. My hypothesized proportion was 80%. My options here, I'm saying that the proportion is actually greater than, than my hypothesized proportion. Um, my confidence level, I'll keep it at 95%, even though I'm somewhat disposed to this. And here my p-value turned out to be about 2.3%. This is the math behind it. This is actually what we would calculate it if we had a normal distribution. We figure that 2.3% of that would be greater than this. And notice that my upper bound is, I'd be, we are 95% confident that the true proportion of right-handers is greater than 82.9%. And so because my hypothesized mean is not in my confidence interval, I would reject the null hypothesis. If it were in there, then I'd fail to reject. If it's out of there, I reject. Okay, that's kind of the idea that this is going about. So we're not really making a statement as to the, the purport, true proportion, correct? I mean, I guess if we have the confidence interval, we can say it's between, or 95% confidence between 82.6 and, say, I don't know, 80, 90%. Yeah. Or something. But we're, 
when we're rejecting the null hypothesis, we're not necessarily we're texting the claim and saying 80% is not the right number. It's greater right. than okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. In general, in general, not always, your alternative hypothesis is what you want to demonstrate or have proof of. The, the, there's something you can say. It's not this, so the alternative must be true. The null hypothesis, on the other hand, you don't really accept. You just fail to reject. You just kind of say, well, I'm kind of ambiguous or I'm agnostic of this. And so, okay, let's do one with uh, um, quantitative data. And so if you go to the one for the locks um, stat key one, so if you get to this page, the lock five stat key. And um, we'll do this one for one proportion, test for a single proportion. So click on that. And you want to do the one with dog match with owners, numbers that end in zero. Um, oh, I got the wrong one. That's all proportions. I'm sorry. Uh, single mean. Yeah. Do you want to do the one with body temperature, arsenic and chicken, home prices, mammal lifespans? We all like animals, don't we? I mean, that's. Let's do larvae survival difference. Mary, Mary, Mary. Uh, actually, that's paired, paired data, so I can't do that one just yet. You have to take one of the first five, six. Arsenic. Arsenic and chicken. All right. I don't know the background of this story so well, but we'll take a look at this, this arsenic and chicken one. All right. So <clears throat> here is our sample mean. Here is our data. And so what we're saying is our claim is, well, first of all, we have six. So will this be a t-test or a z-test? It'll have to be a t-test. So it's a one sample t-test for me. And we're saying that the null hypothesis is the mean amount of arsenic in chicken is 80. I don't know if that's 80 parts per million or 80 grams or whatever. And the alternative hypothesis is I would think that mu is bigger than 80. That, you know, if if arsenic is bigger than 80, then we're going to die. Or I don't know. There's arsenic in so many other things, right? Small amounts of arsenic is appropriate. Why are we using 80? Well, because that's what it gives me here. OK. That's my going to be my hypothesized mean. All right, let's take a look at the assumptions. Is it random? Yeah. No, we can't give up. <laughs> no, we don't know. We can't say if it's random or not. Um, is it normal? No. How do you know? Well, first of all, is n bigger than 30? No. No, because no, we can't use the essential limit theorem. So let's go ahead and look at the data, and maybe we could enter that into uh, mini tab. So let's go ahead, and if you edit data, you can copy all of that, parts per billion, I guess. Control C and put that into mini tab someplace. How do you check for something to be normal or not? Um, the probability plot. Yeah, so we plot the probability plot. So go to graph, probability plot. And make sure you want to look at something for normal. Make sure we have the normal distribution there. We have such small data points. And you know, with only small data sign, I guess it's plausible it could be normal. So based on probability plot, it's plausible it came from a normal distribution. Okay. 
exponentially, not from a normal distribution, from an approximately normal distribution. Um, what's our level of significance we want? Let's try 0.01, 1 percent chance. If something is, so we're going to reject uh, the null hypothesis if the p-value is less than or equal to 0 0.01. Say it's a probable one chance. So let's kind of go back to our distribution here. So this is our sample. So what we're in our sample, we had a sample of 91. And a standard deviation of, of what? 23.465? Nine. Okay, so that would mean our test statistic would be T is 91 minus 80 over 23.469 over the square root of 6. Okay, so we're standardized onto a particular distribution. But let's go ahead and do it, um, simulate it. And I want a right tail one. Well, let's go ahead and simulate. Generate one sample. I got a sample of 77.83. I do another one. I got a sample of 91.33. Yeah, it's pretty close to my um, 91 that I got. And if I do this over and over again, you can kind of see a normal distribution appear. With such small data, I don't get everything filled in. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a right tail test here. And so this is a little uh, tricky. What you do is click on this button right here, this 98.667, and plug in the value of 91. And what this shows is, the assuming that my mean, true mean is 80, to see something as extreme as 91 or more extreme than 91 would happen 12% of the time. I clicked on one of these buttons. First of all, you have to click one of these buttons. I clicked the right tail. Click on this button, whatever it is, and put a 91 there, and that will then get this. So 12% of the time, is that plausible? Yeah, so we failed to reject the null hypothesis. What was, I'm sorry, not. What was your p-value? Was it? 0. 0.112. 0.112. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 0.119. 
Well, you you know because that way you have to have the data in the column, unless you want to use what's there. If you copied and pasted your data, I guess you could do it that way. I was just thinking you could um, enter the data. So I guess you could do both ways. I, I forgot that we copied that data in there. Is there, do we use 91 for a hypothesized proportion? No, no, we use, not for proportion. Okay. You should be on one, one sample t-test, one t-test, one. Because this is quantitative data, not categorical data, not kind of number okay. of successes over the total number. I forgot about that we have this both ways. All right, so there are two ways you can do this. One, because we copied this here, we could use this data and go to stat um, and do one sample t and do the column, the PPB column, and the hypothesized mean was 80. And the graph, I guess we want to have a pretty high part of this, 99%. And the mean was greater than our hypothesized mean. And by the way, we also probably want graphs. The individual value plot is not as beneficial, but. So you can see the T value was 0.115. For 1.1. So did other people get 151 using the data? Mm -hmm. What about entering in the uh, data? You do get the same? Okay. So I just had a, a bad sample. Um, so in this case, do we have enough evidence to doubt that the arsenic level in chicken is greater than 80 on average? No. So do we reject an null hypothesis or fail to reject? Yeah. Do we ever accept an null hypothesis? OK, thank you. That's another screaming part you might hear me from. That's like bonus. You have extra credit. You have extra penalty if you say extra, we accept the null hypothesis. So it's always reject or fail to reject yeah. the null. Yeah. But you could accept the alternative hypothesis? Yes, that's right. You're, you could accept the null alternative hypothesis. Yeah. And then always write your answers in context. Um, Uh, we don't have enough evidence to claim arsenic average is bigger than mean. Let's go ahead and see. Suppose I got a test statistic of 1.15. Let's go ahead and make sure that we know how to calculate its p-value. Uh, graph, then to what? Yeah, probability distribution plot. I want to view the probability. I need to change my Distribution to T, how many degrees of freedom for this one sample t-test of sample size five. six, five. So I put that in there in the shaded area. I just want the right tail. Um, I'm given the T value of 1.151, so I don't need to, to click on that. And then so my probability would be point one five. As the, as the p value for that. So, not enough to reject the null hypothesis. What is our x value? Uh, 1.151, that's the t that we got from subtracting 91 minus 80 divided by the standard error. Oh, by the way, I guess we could take a look at that. So, if we took 
um, 23.469 or 23.47 divided by the square root of 6, that's where you should get the standard error, the mean, and then you need to multiply by this. Notice that our lower bound is this. So what's what would we... Um, We'd say we're 99% confident that the mean amount of arsenic is at least 59.76. Does that contain 80 in it? Yeah, so again, that's another evidence that we failed to reject the whole hypothesis. Okay, so there's, make sure you turn in your homework. There's nothing you need to turn in for this lab. Um, but I hope that you have a better understanding of the p-value. Remember the p-value of a particular data set equals the probability, presuming the null hypothesis is true. Notice when we switch the, the null hypothesis, that changed the p-value. Uh, something getting something, obtain a test statistic, something like this, either a t or a z-value, as favorable or more favorable to the alternative hypothesis based on the particular data set. If Colin goes ahead and, and interviews 100 people and 87 of them get, say they're right-handed, that's going to change what my p-value is. So it's attached to a particular null hypothesis and it's attached to a particular data set, sample data. Because again, we're trying to make claims about the population based on a sample. Or that could have been different. Thank you all. See you tomorrow. Try to avoid isolation and quarantine. <laughs> I think it's the second time. Is the football team back at it?